I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise will continually be in my mouth. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have and I can do what it says I can do. Because of God's word, my life will never, ever, ever be the same. Amen. I declare and I confess and I testify that I will listen diligently unto the word of God to observe and do all that he says in his word. I am set on high above all races on the earth by God. All the blessings will come on me and overtake me if I would listen to the word of God. I'm blessed in the city and in the field. My body is fruitful and I walk in divine health. My cash flow is increased. My storehouse is blessed. I'm blessed coming in and going out. The Lord will smite my enemies that rise against me. They will come before me one way and run before me seven ways. I have the God kind of faith that brings the God kind of results. I walk in favor with God and man. Wealth and riches are in my house. I will remember the Lord because it is he that gives me power to acquire wealth so that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto our fathers as it is this day. My family is the blessed of the Lord. The Lord made me the head and not the tail. I'm above only. I would not be beneath. The works of my hands are blessed. I would lend to all races and not borrow. I have a thousand times more ideas, insights, and concepts. Watch your thoughts. They become your words. Watch your words. They become your actions. Watch your actions. They become your habits. And watch your habits. They become your character, who you are now and in the future. We thank the Lord for you. Amen. Tuning in to our broadcast today, we thank all of our live audience and we thank God for those who are streaming live. Amen. If you have your Bible, if you will, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Turn your Bibles to 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel chapter 16 and verse number 5. 2 Samuel chapter 16 and verse number 5. And when King David came to Bahurim, behold, thence came out a man of the family of the house of Saul, whose name was Shimei the son of Gerah, he came forth and cursed still as he came. That would be 2 Samuel chapter 16, verse number 5, and I'm now reading at verse number 6. And he cast stones at David, and at all the servants of the king David, and all the people and all the mighty men were on his right hand and on his left. And thus says Shimei, when he cursed, come out, come out, thou bloody man and thou man of Belial. The Lord hath returned upon thee all the blood of the house of Saul, in whose stead thou hast reigned. And the Lord had delivered the kingdom into the hand of Absalom, thy son. And behold, thou art taken in thy mischief, because thou art a bloody man. Then said Abishai, the son of Zuriel, unto the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? 
Let me go over, I pray thee, and take off his head. And the king said, what have I to do with you, you sons of Zuriel? So let him curse, because the Lord has said unto him, curse David. Who shall then say, wherefore hast thou done so? And David said to Abishai and to all the servants, Behold my son, which came forth of my bowels, seek my life. How much more now made this Benjamite do it? Let him alone and let him curse, for the Lord hath bidden him. Let the church say, Amen. I want to read just for a subject's sake. Verse number 13. And as David and his men went by the way, Shimei went along on the hillside over against him and cursed as he went and threw stones at him and cast dust. May you repeat after me when the dust settles. When the dust settled. The backdrop of this story, if you will, King David is now king over Israel instead of Saul. Saul was a good looking man, tall, this in, in the description of the Bible, Saul was fine. He was Tall, you know, tall, us tall men, you know, we think we all that in the bag of chips, you know, but uh, <laughs> uh, he was tall and Saul was tall and good looking. And that's what got the people attention. They wanted Saul to be their king. They wanted a, a good looking king, a, a, a statuette king, one who was, had him some biceps and some abs cut up. He was cut up and and look good. And the people wanted them a king and they chose Saul to be their king. God against his own will because God wanted to be the king over Israel. He wanted to be the king over his people. He didn't, he, you know, God is a jealous God. And God gave them what they wanted. And God gave King Saul a command told Saul, he said, now, there's, there's this guy by the name of, of, of King, uh, uh, what's that king name? I'm telling the story, but I ain't remembering the king name. That was Jezebel's husband. What was Jezebel's husband's name? I'm going to find it now. Y'all don't tell me. I'm going to find it. I have to go through my script. Ahab, thank you. Thank you, sir. That's a Bible student. Uh, I would have, it came up at some point, but thank you. Uh, King Ahab, uh, Ahab, Agag, Ahab, Ahab. God told him to get rid of him. Get rid of him. I want you to, I want you to go to his kingdom. I want you to kill him and everybody in the kingdom. And don't take nothing. Don't take nothing. I don't want nothing belong to him at all. I want you to take him out. So he decided he was going to go and obey God. But when he got there, he saw the king royal down and, and he saw all of the king's possession. So he decided that he'll do everything that God told him to do but kill the king and not take the spoil. He listened to the people. The people wanted the spoil. And, and the king, you know, he, the king, so the people chose him. So he listened to the people who chose him. You know, it's something about uh, when people start catering to people because they can vote for them. They start listening to what the people say and not listen to God. King Saul didn't listen to God and it cost him the kingdom. God punished him. He sent the prophet, the same prophet that's going to show up to King David is showing up. Samuel, 
He sent Samuel to Saul, and he sent a prophet to David by the name of Nathan. He sent Samuel to Saul, and, and he said, Saul, did you do everything that God told you to do? And he lied. He said, yeah, I did everything you told me to do. He said, well, what is that bleaking out here in the background? What is that noise? Sounds sound like there's some livestock. Yeah, you say, did you save anything? Did you, did you not do what God told you to do? No, I, I listened to the people. The people, the people, the people told me. Be careful with the people, y'all. The people. Listen to the people and disobey God. And then God took the kingdom from him. He said to Saul, I'm going to take the kingdom from you and I'm going to give it to one of your neighbors. Gave it to David. And every time Saul suspected it was going, who it was going to be, he tried to get rid of it. Tried to get rid of King David. Somebody said, when the dust settles, somebody's always trying to take you out of God's position, out of God's place. And he did everything he could to prevent David from becoming king without even realizing that it was King David. It was just a neighbor. So I'm going to get rid of all, I'm going to get rid of this neighbor. This boy here, he, 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 he getting close. He brought David into the kingdom and he tried to javelin him. He tried to kill him. And because of the, the, the anointing, the, the, the spirit of God that was on him, he was swift. See, when you got the anointing on you, you swift, you get out the way of the enemy's attacks and, and the enemy blows. And, and here David is now king, but, 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 but you got to remember David did something in, in, in his life. When he became king over Israel, when God uh, had already chosen him to be king and sent Samuel down, the same Samuel who, who, who told Saul about what he did, he sent him down with some oil to anoint the next king over Israel. And, and he went, uh, Samuel went through, the, through all the sons, uh, Saul, uh, 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 that was David's daddy, David's daddy, Jesse had Eight sons, but he only brought out seven. Somebody say completion. He brought out the completion. He brought out seven of the sons. And, and Samuel went down with the oil to pour the oil on the first one's head. And, and the Lord said, oh, no. Don't waste my oil on that. Mm -mm. He is not the one. And, and, and how many know that, that we can, we, if we're not careful, we can miss God. By thinking we know what God wants us to do. Ooh. He was getting ready to, to pour the oil on the wrong son. God said, mm, good thing he got here. He can hear God. God said, mm, not him. And he went to the next one. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. He went down the line and God said, no, no, no. Got to the seventh son and Samuel thought he didn't. He, wait, 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 hold up. No God told me to come. And anoint one of these boys to be the next king over Israel, and he don't even want this one. He ain't want that one. He ain't want none of them. So he turned to Jesse. Said, Jesse, do you have any more cheering? <laughs> he said, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, I surely think that you, you wanted him. Yeah, boy, I got one a little ruddy one, you know, a little ruddy one back down there. You know, he watched over the sheep. I got, you know, he ain't clean, he, he smelling. You know, we don't need him over here with my little fine boys right here. You know, these are soldiers, these are fighters. He ain't no, he's not a fighter. We don't, I didn't bring him. Go fetch him. Go get, go get him. Go get him. But David came there, oh, I was shaking in his hand. <laughs> or like John the Baptist when Jesus was coming uh, to be baptized and, and Jesus was coming and John the Baptist said behold the Lamb of God <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> uh, who taketh away the sins of the world and then when John baptized him then here come the Holy Ghost lighting on Jesus Ooh, the anointing the, the, the Holy Spirit lighting on him like a dove somebody said the anointing the, from the head uh, crown him let, let the world know this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased and that's what God did with, with the oil on David I'm pleased with him 
This the one. That's the one I want. I, and, and, and this is what, y'all, y'all help me out. Please help me out. With, with all of the future inclinations, with all the future frailties, God chose this boy knowing that he was going to sleep with Bathsheba. Knowing that when the kings would go to war, David would choose to, to stay in Jerusalem, stay in the castle and let the men go to war when all the other kings are going out there to fight for their kingdom. David decided he's going to stay home. Went to the rooftop Chilling, decide he gonna get on the hammock or get a, a lay on the y'all know he on the cart. He gonna chill out, but he messed around and peeped across the balcony and saw this fine black woman by the name of Bathsheba. Bathsheba was washing herself down, cleaning up, doing what she do. She wasn't trying to uh, uh, show nobody her because the king wasn't supposed to be in the palace, no way. There's supposed to be no men around. They're supposed to be out fighting. And then David messed around and peeped over there and got in his flesh. And he said, go, go get her and bring her to the king. And then there was this maid said, uh, that uh, King David, that's, uh, what's his name, daughter and, and Uriah's wife. You notice how she, she, she made it clear to identify who Bathsheba was to the king so there would be no error, no mistakes made, making it known King David, not this one, not this one. She's married. She got a husband, and the husband is out there fighting in your war. Doing what you should be. Now, they ain't say all that, but y'all know, y'all know the, the whole story. That's what David should have been doing, that Uriah was out there fighting. And David persisted. That they go get Bathsheba and bring her up. Then the scripture says she was beautiful. Y'all know in, in our colloquialism, we would say she was fine. <laughs> she was bad. She came up there, and David, what David took her and, and, and laid with her, and she got pregnant. And when she got pregnant, she found out she was pregnant. The first thing she did was make sure David knew I'm, I'm pregnant. In other words, are you going to make me an honorable woman? Because you've already dishonored me by sleeping with me. And David started to cover up. Instead of him doing the right thing, he started covering up. Go get uh, Uriah so he can sleep with her behind me. Uh, y'all, y'all, y'all might be painting paint the picture, do you? That he can come behind me and it looked like it's his baby. But God was in control all alone. Uriah came home from war and sat on the porch and went to sleep. King David found out he wouldn't go in. And then David said, get him drunk. Get him, get the boy something. He, you know, he get, a little, get a little high on. He probably would, you know, go on in there with his woman. He drunk, still didn't go in. David said, well, I need Joab. You know, Joab was his boy. Joab, I need you to go and take this young man, take him and put him in the heat of the wall, put him in the front in the front line. So when the heat come, he'll be the first, they'll be the first ones that they wipe out. Uriah died in the hand, at the hands of David, bloody hands. His hands was bloody. And, and this man, Shimei, Shimei remembered David's sin. And Shimei reminded David, he said, you cursed you trifling, you make unaccountable errors. You got blood on your hand. You killed Uriah. He said it. He said it. He said, you Belial, you're a murderer. And he kicked stones and dust at David. And David was paying for his sins. 
God told him, he said, the sword will never leave your house. We know Absalom, his son, wanted his kingdom. David's son had sons and they were, and, and had another son that was killed. David loved his boys. <laughs> David loved his boys. It's, you know, when the woman, when, when Bathsheba got pregnant, David wanted that baby, y'all. He wanted that baby real bad. He, 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 he wouldn't eat nothing. He just, he, he, he fasted and, and he, he, he just wanted this baby to live. But God. That ain't the one. Remind me of, of, of Abraham having uh, 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 Isaac. And he had a, uh, had a uh, 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 what we would call a concubine, uh, handmaiden. And, uh, and he decided that he was going to go into Haggai. He went into Haggai based on people say. His wife suggested it. I, 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 come on, y'all, talk to Pastor. Uh, it, it, was, it was Sarah's idea that he go into the, to the, to the bondwoman, and go into the handmaiden. She was uh, like a wife, but she wasn't, she wasn't Sarah. She wasn't God's choice. He went into her, and she got pregnant with Ishmael. But God didn't choose Ishmael because he wanted Abraham to have him an Isaac. He wanted him to have a, a Hebrew boy, not a mixed breed. Oh, y'all help me today. He didn't want him to have a Gentile baby because uh, Haggai was, a, uh, was an Egyptian girl. Yeah, yeah, a black woman. Y'all don't mind walking, me walking the scriptures, do you? She was a dark-skinned girl. So, he was, so now he, uh, he, God said, oh, no, no, I want pure blood. And David, against the will of God, went into Bathsheba. And he had this baby that it wasn't God's choice. And God said, mm-mm. David stayed. He, he wouldn't eat nothing, wouldn't take no bath, wouldn't change his clothes, and the baby died. Ooh. When the baby died, he cleaned himself up and put on royal gaiety. Uh, he put on his, his good cologne and cleaned up real good, and, and he started feasting and eating, and the people went and they saw David, they said, What's something got to be wrong? Now this man, when the baby was when the baby was alive and he and the baby was sick, he wouldn't eat nothing. He he was he was he 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 was mourning over the baby, but now the baby died and he's he's walking around like a kid, nothing wrong. And David said, the baby can't return to me, but I can go. Good God Almighty, but I can go. To him, the day will come when I go to sleep with my fathers. I'm gonna be with that boy one day. Ooh, oh, that tells us uh, that God got a plan for babies. Uh, can I get me a witness? <laughs> See, and, and David, David, know he messed up, and he was he had to live with that. But 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 just in case you forgot, David. He kicking dust at David, throwing rocks at him and, and being accusatory and reminding David that he, he killed Uriah, reminding David of his sin, reminding David what he did. This man, God was using this man to push David in the right posture. See, see, uh, the Bible tells us, he said, be sure your sins will find you out. <laughs> oh, your sins will come knocking on your door. Y'all remember Cain when he killed Abel, the, the Lord says, sin is at the door. <laughs> so you can't hide from sin. I wish I had me somebody. I'm, I'm feeling good today because th this man, was he, was he was saying to David when he cursed him, he was saying, you're despicable and trifling. Could you imagine him talking to the king like that? And the king had some bad boys with him. That's some mighty men of valor. David had some bad boys. David had some boys that were so bad, he, they were killing. One of them had with a weaver's uh, 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 spear. He was just taking people out. 
David had some bad boys. David had some boys so bad that David got thirsty and they went through the troop. They ran through Saul's army and got David some water and came back, didn't spill not one drop of the water and brought it back and gave it to David. That's how bad his men was. Good God Almighty. So you know if his, all his boys was that bad, whoever that was, Shimei couldn't stand a chance. He said, he said to King David, he said, who is that talking to the king like that? Just allow me to go over and cut off his head. He's despising the king. He's calling you despicable. He's, he's calling you trifling. Let me at him. He's saying that you're despicable. Let me get at him. <laughs> I chop his head off, King King David, he's disrespecting you in such manner. And David said, no, that's God cursing me. That's God saying that what I did was despicable. <laughs> it's God that's saying what I did was trifling. And I'm paying for it because now my son Absalom wants my kingdom. He wants to dethrone me. Absalom, the scripture says that Absalom went to the kingdom. You know, David, David had got wind of what he was trying to do. So David had to had to shift from the kingdom. He had to move because he didn't want to kill his son. He didn't want to go at war with his son. So David left. And, and while David was gone, uh, uh, Absalom went to the kingdom and called all of his and, and built him a tent on top of the kingdom put his tent on top of the kingdom and had all of David's concubines to meet him in the tent. Lord have mercy. What David did in secret, God brought it in the open. He had his son to sleep with his wives in the open. David hid his sin. How? Oh, God covered David in his sin, but he didn't cover him with, with his son Absalom sleeping with his wives out in broad daylight. And the people watching his wives go in <laughs> with his son. Words all over the kingdom that Absalom is, is, is the king. Absalom is the king. But he didn't know that God had a plan, not for him, but for his daddy. His daddy was God's chosen. His daddy was God's man. He wasn't God's man. He wasn't God's choice. And in order for him to be king, David had to die anyway. He couldn't be king with David living. So he tried to get counsel on getting rid of David. And every time he, he spoke to one counsel, he talked to uh, 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 that was a fifth chef. Uh, he he talked. Y'all, let me get the name right, y'all. A uh, uh, hip uh, 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 a hip a a He talked to his hip and his affair told him, "Say yeah, yeah, I, I I know how you can do it." Gave him a plot on how to kill the king, but then he didn't know. See, God got had a ram in the bush, bush by the name of Hushi, and Hushi I told uh, uh, came behind. A uh, uh, whip came behind his council and told and told Absalom said, "No, I don't think you ought to go to war with your daddy like that. I think you ought to. I think you ought to uh, be a little little subtle with it. I think you need to be a little sly with your going to war with your daddy because see, your daddy got some bad boys with him. And if, you know, if if he you go to war with your daddy and you get caught wrong, see the people gonna flip because they gonna they gonna realize this is King David and King David got some bad boys and they gonna kill all of us. But not go that route. And. Absalom decided, well, maybe that's, that's the right way to go and not to listen to this other guy's counsel and go this route. And then what, they, what God was doing, God was protecting David. He was protecting David so that Absalom wouldn't trap him so he can ambush him. And he made a way for him to get out. But what I'm saying, I want you to understand something. It don't matter what the enemy plot against you, the dust will settle. 
It reminds me of when God created man. He created man and he formed him, the scripture says. He formed man from the very dust of the ground. And I did me a little research, uh, uh, Ernest. I did me a little research and found out that uh, another word for dust is mortal. Mortal. And I happen to be a, a brick mason by skill. And I know what it is to, to get mortar and get your trial and, and get you some get you some some sand and get you some 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 cement and, and get you some water and mix it up real good and, and to get real thick and get you some bricks and get you some blocks and, and lay them lay them, put that mortar on them and they stick. The mortar is used to build stuff. And the very dust that God made man, he made man from the dust of the ground. And I heard the Holy Ghost say, I made him to build. I created him out of the dust of the ground, not, not because it was the smallest particle. Not because it was so miscure. Not because it was value, valueless. No, I made him from that because he's a builder. God Almighty, I made man from, from the dust, from mortar, because I made him where if he got wet, he can build stuff. If he got wet, if, he, if water got on him, he can build stuff. Instead of him tearing stuff down, anything that's torn down, I, I built him to be a restorer. Oh, and here, here is uh, Shimei. Kicking dust and rocks at David, not realizing that David was a man that was created like Adam was. He was created from the dust of the ground. I'm so glad that I understand that, that when God uh, uh, formed Adam from the dust of the ground, when God was forming him, you got to understand that it had to be a mist to fall from heaven. It had to be some water to fall from heaven in order for when he formed him, he would stick. <laughs> the dust would stick. When water hits it, uh -huh. and I'm, 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 I'm so mindful of when God formed Adam from the dust of the ground, the Bible says he breathed in him a breath through his nostril, the breath, he breathed the breath of God, the pneuma of God. Uh, he breathed into his nostrils and he became a living soul. Can I walk it, y'all? And when he became a living soul, uh huh, and God created him and, and God saw that he was he was alone and he he says not good that man should be alone and then God put him in a deep sleep uh, 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 that and when he put him in a deep sleep he, he, he went and did some surgery and God uh, did surgery from the side of Adam and, and the scripture says and and he made and he made woman created woman from the rib of the man now, I, 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 I'm, you know, I, I did some speculations, if y'all will, uh, uh, in my mind, in my, in my medulla. I, I started doing some rationalization and, uh, when I thought about that. I said, he made the woman, created the woman from the rib of the man. So he, 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 didn't, he, didn't, he didn't create her from the man's rib for nothing because he said, listen to what he said. He said, a bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. For this reason would a man uh, uh, leave his mother and his father and cleave <laughs> to his wife. And, and the reason why he gonna cleave to her because she's a part of him. You know, he see, it's a, his rib and his rib was cleaving to him when it was inside of him. His rib was cleaving to him. His rib was close to him when it was inside of him. His rib had a purpose. His rib was protected his vital organs, his rib. Uh, y'all help me now. And see the woman, see women, y'all need to get this. Now you really need to get this. If you got a man, God created you from the rib of the man so you can protect him. You can protect his heart. Oh, you can protect his vital organs. Y'all help pastor today. Instead of you uh, 
thrust in him in this side. And, and instead of you trying to pull his heart out, God created you to, to protect his heart. Oh, protect the, the soul of the man, to protect the rationalization of the man, to protect the man so that he won't make the wrong decisions. Not to encourage him to make the wrong decision. But to encourage him when he's going down the wrong path, said, baby, no, that ain't, that ain't what God wants for you. God got better for you than that decision right there. Coerce him. Lead him in the right direction. Don't tell him, here, bite this. I'm wrong. You be wrong, too. It's not what God called you to do. God called you to, to tell him, say, baby, I'm wrong. You ain't got to be wrong with me. Two wrongs don't make no right. Just let me be wrong by myself. We know David was wrong. But as I close, I want to remind you that even when you are driving down the street, and a storm break out, and you can't see the car in front of you. You can't see through the storm. The storm, the rain is just like dust. It prevents you from seeing. It's like fog, it fog up your vision. It um, causes your vision to be obscure. You, 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 you can't see anything, everything become oblique. Uh, but I remember, can I, can, I, can I testify a little bit? I remember uh, me and some, and some uh, young sisters, some sisters uh, from Philippians. We were coming from Washington, D.C., heading back to Jacksonville. And then we was in the car driving, and all of a sudden, a tumultuous storm broke out. And everybody began to pull their vehicles over on the side of the road. And we couldn't see nothing in front of us. We couldn't see nothing. When I say nothing, I mean absolutely, positively nothing. You couldn't see the lines. You couldn't see a car. You couldn't see nothing but water on the windshield. But as we were driving, I heard the panic in the car. And they were saying, Pastor Mincy. No, I was Elder Mincy then, but still, the title's still the same. They said, Elder Mincy, you need to pull over because we can't see. And they kept saying, uh, you need to pull over. We can't see. And all the cars, everybody was pulled over, pulling over to the side of the road. And I heard the Holy Ghost tell me, ha, Lord, have mercy. I heard the Holy Ghost say, keep on going. <laughs> keep right on going. Don't pull over. Don't stop. Just keep on riding. And after a while, y'all, when as I kept going, all of a sudden, I got a breakthrough. I broke through on the other side where it wasn't raining. And I heard the Holy Ghost tell me, he said, look back. Lord, have mercy. I turned around and I looked back and I saw nothing but a storm. Y'all better help me preach while I'm preaching. And he said to me, he said, what do you see? I see, I said, I see a storm. He said, what else do you see? I see, I said, I see cars on the side of the road. He said, that would have been you caught in the midst of the storm. He said, those cars are still in the storm, but you are on the other side of the storm. I come to preach to y'all today and let you know when the dust settles, you'll be on the other side of the storm. Keep right on going because I'm telling you today that the enemy is attacking your family, but I heard the Lord told me to tell you that the dust will settle settle. He might be attacking your health, but I come to tell you that Jesus said, by my 
stripes, you are healed. I want you to touch your body and say the dust will settle. I wish I had me somebody who understand what the word says. Not only my health, but my finances. Oh Lord, he said, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as your soul prosper. Somebody might be listening to me tonight and you might not be saved, but I come to tell you tonight that Jesus paid the price for you. He paid the price for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I come to tell you tonight that you can be born again. That when the dust settle, you can be on the other side of the windstorm. You can be on the other side of the dust storm. And you can be born again. Somebody help pastor tonight and let me tell somebody when the dust settles, everything gonna be alright. Yes it will. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord. He told me to tell you today that your relationships are going to get better. I wish I had somebody who understood prophecy that God is telling me to tell you that your family may be falling apart, but don't worry. If God be for us, who can be against us? Somebody help me tonight. The devil is trying to tear up your family. He's trying to tear up your marriage. But I come to tell you when the dust settles, everything gonna be all right. The Lord is fighting for you. You need not to fight in this battle. Oh, Jehoshaphat, I know you want to fight. I know you feel like fighting. I know you think you got to fight. But Jehoshaphat was afraid. He was fearful. But God, turn me down, son. But God made it known that I got you. You ain't got a thing to worry about. Tell that neighbor, say, God got you. God got you. In the midst of the storm, in the midst of the storm, God got you. In the midst of it, in the midst of it, God got you. The Lord told me to remind you tonight that I got you. I don't care how bad it look. I don't care about the dust. I don't care about them kicking the rocks. <laughs> Tell the devil, say, kick rocks, devil, kick rocks, devil, kick rocks, devil, kick rocks, devil. Because I want to remind you of something that the Lord uh, told me to remind you of tonight. Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16. Tell somebody, say, on the flip side. Yeah, on the flip side. Devil gonna eat my dust. Eat my dust, devil. Romans 16. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in here tonight, y'all. Ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost in here tonight. Glory to God. Now listen, listen to this, listen to this. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, let's see. See what the Lord is saying in that verse 20. Romans 16 and verse number 20. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Tell somebody, I say shortly. Uh, shortly, shortly, shortly is here now. <laughs> shortly has come to not e! Shortly has come in here tonight. The devil is under my feet to eat dust, devil. <laughs> the devil is under our feet. And, and I want to, now listen to me, now listen to me, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. He says, and, and uh, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Somebody say amen. amen. So be it. And so shall it be. It got to happen because I, I, because I validated it. We validate God's word when we say amen. We, 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 we saying to God, Lord, I agree with what you just said. I, I agree. But what you just said. Now, let me show you something, y'all. Let me show you something. Remember, we made from the dust, right? 
I, I won't preach this no more. So I'm going to give it all to you tonight. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. In, in uh, Genesis chapter 3. Remember we made from the dust of the ground, right? Uh-huh. Now, we made from the dust. Now, Genesis chapter 3 verse 14 says, And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above all every beast of the field upon the, thy belly. Isn't that what he said? And upon thy belly shalt thou go and dust. Is that what he said? And dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Tell them to eat my dust. <laughs> eat my. See, remember, we made from dust, men. Men, we, no, not, not the women. Y'all ain't made from dust. Y'all made from our ribs. So, 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 we, so, so we, we, have, we your protection. We protect you too. See, we protect you because we, 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 we are the dust. We are the dust. So we tell the devil, uh, eat dust, devil. Uh, uh, huh? So eat dust. But see, you can tell him to eat dust too because I'm going to get to that in a minute. You can tell the devil. See, women could tell the devil to eat dust too. And I'm going to show you uh, that in a minute. And he says in verse number 15, he says, and, and I will Put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall do what? Bruise thy what? Head. So in other words, eat dust, devil. So so if, if he if he if I'm gonna if the woman seed is gonna bruise his head, his head got to be under her foot. Talk to me, somebody. Say, eat dust, devil. Now, now I ain't done. I'm just, just getting started at, at the end. <laughs> I'm, I'm ending, but I'm just getting started at the end. Listen to this. Uh, Genesis chapter 3, 19. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, talking to the man, till thou return unto what? The ground. For out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou do what? Return. See, a uh, man going back to dust is, is not a defeated state. It's a victorious state. Uh, you remember what Jesus said? Uh, he went down in the grave and he took the keys from the devil. He took the sting of death. <laughs> oh, and he took the, the fear of the grave from, the, from, from humanity. See, we ain't got to worry about it. He, he swallowed up death. Ooh, boy, y'all gonna make me, y'all gonna make me uh, run, run across the, the river here in a minute and grab something. There's something over there in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Y'all want to go over there with me? Go over there with me, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15 in my clothes. I believe I'm warming up for preaching on Saturday too. Uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, uh-huh. And it says here in verse 54, when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death, somebody said death, death is swallowed up in victory. See, see when, when, when man go back to the dust, He's going back to victory. Lord, have mercy. You, you were victorious when God formed you, and you're victorious going back to the grave. Can I preach while I'm preaching? And old, old death, somebody say, old death. Old death, where is thy sting? Old grave, where is thy victory? See, there's no, there's no victory over us because from dust we came, and from dust we will return. Tell that devil, say, devil, eat my dust. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Aaron, you had me so loud. They could have heard me in Jerusalem. And now you got me so low that they can't hear me outside. Uh, it's amazing how you, you operate that volume. <laughs> when I need it, you won't give it to me. <laughs> And when I don't need it, you give it to me. <laughs> Tell the devil, say, devil, eat my dust. We have the victory, saints. We have the victory. We're not crouching on victory. We have the victory. We're not attempting to get the victory. We have the victory. We're not trying to get the victory. We have the, hallelujah, 
We have the victory. And any time the enemy comes to attempt to disturb your peace, you tell him, you didn't give me this. God gave it to me. And the God of all peace. He's the God of all. He's the God of peace. And he gave it to us through his son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, my peace. Being that I'm a product of the father, my peace I give to you. My peace, I leave with you. If he left it, don't let nobody come take it. He left his peace. The enemy going to try all sorts of sly, slick, subtle things. Because you know he's walking. He ain't running. You know a lion don't run. He walks on it's pray because he want to catch him off guard. He want to catch him slipping. You catch a coyote slipping, it's over. And you know a coyote is a match for him because he got some partners. And they, 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 they run in packs. Somebody said they run in packs. But if you catch him slipping by himself, he in trouble because he walking about seeking whom he may devour. And Sometimes the, the lion, he rolls out and chases his prey. But when he try to catch that gazelle, that gazelle slips through his fingers because he quick and fast. And that's what we tell the devil. I'm a gazelle devil. <laughs> Eat my dust. <laughs> you got to let the enemy know who's the fastest. You might be ferocious, lion. You might be walking. But I got my eyes on you because the Lord told us. He said, be sober. Be alert. Pay attention. Don't let the enemy creep you. Just because you're sick don't mean you got to stay there. Just because you have a little, little financial woe don't mean you got to stay there. <laughs> Just because you have a, a disagreement among yourselves don't mean you got to stay there. Peter Ask the question, Lord, how many times should I forgive my brother if he sinned against me? When we, and yes, we have the proclivities to sin against one another. But you know what? My strength is in my forgiveness. Ha! My, my relief is in my forgiveness. I, 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 can, I can go in the chambers of my heart and say, I forgive them. They don't, they don't never have to know until they see my actions. They never, they, I, don't have to, I don't even have to go to them and say, I forgive you. Forgive them in my heart. The question Jesus imposed on the Pharisees, he said, y'all try to clean the outside but you fail to clean the inside because out of here comes hatred. Out of here comes unforgiveness. Out of here comes murder. Out of here come evil thoughts out of the heart. He said, get the heart right. Did our neighbor said my heart right. See, when I, get, when I get my heart right with God, it's easy for me to get my heart right with humanity. Because I'm walking to please him. And when I walk to please him, I don't walk with narcissistic characteristics. I don't care about nobody but myself. You know, I, I, I'm all right. I'm good by myself. I don't need nobody. Forget y'all. That's narcissistic thinking. We are not to think that way because Jesus told us the first thing he said when I decided to, to give my life to him, he said, deny yourself. Deny yourself, Anthony. No longer think selfish. Hallelujah. But think generally. Think about the masses. Don't just think about yourself. Because no man is an island. 
And no man is an entity to himself. One man's death affects us all, no matter who they are or what they've done and what they're doing. Their death depletes me too. It bothers me too. It takes away from me as well. Amen. So we thank God tonight for this, this powerful word. When the dust settles. And it will. Somebody said, thank you, Lord, for the dust settling. Thank you for the dust settling. You might be watching tonight. You might be watching tonight and you're not saved. You're not, you're not born again. You never asked Jesus to come into your life as your Lord and Savior. You never even confessed Jesus as Lord. You never even said, I believe in Jesus Christ. But tonight, all you have to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is the son of God and God raised him from the dead he died on the third day and he rose up on the third day rose up from the dead for your sins and mine you can be saved just like me I gotta jump on you some 40 some years I've been saved I gotta jump on you but guess what it don't mean nothing to God if you got saved today and Jesus came tonight we both going to heaven <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. You going to heaven and I'm going too. And he's not going to be asking you how long you've been saved. Your one minute save equals to my 40 years. The thief on the cross. Jesus went to paradise that day. He went right along with him because he believed that Jesus was the son of God. And that's all you need to do. Just believe. Only believe. And after believing, tell somebody. Somebody asked you, are you a Christian? Yes, I'm a Christian. <laughs> yes, I'm saved. I, I, you ain't got to quote not one scripture. You don't have to prove to them that you're saved. Your proof to your salvation is Jesus in your heart. That's the only proof we have and the only proof we need. Yeah, because when, when the Lord comes, He's looking for Jesus. He ain't looking for nothing else. He's not looking for how much uh, Bible I memorized, how many sermons I preached. He ain't looking for none of that. He's looking for born again believers. That's what he want. He, he's not looking for nobody not to be saved. That's not why he's coming. He don't want nobody not to be saved because the scripture says he wished that none perish but that all will come to repent. He want every man, every man on planet earth to be saved, but it's just it, by their own choice that they choose not to. By their own volition that they choose not to. It's not by God's will. God will that none perish. He want everybody, everybody go to heaven and say, I'm on my way to heaven. I got heaven on my mind. I'm on my way to heaven. And I want to go to heaven. Amen. So even if that's you, go online, go fill out, Amen. The membership, the, the salvation card, let us know you're saved. Also, we want to give you an opportunity to be a member of a church. you saved. You don't need to be roaming around. <laughs> Lost, sheep, lone wolf. You need to go to church. Tell, tell that neighbor, you need to go to church. And ask them, say, are you a member of a church? <laughs> If you're, are you a member of a church? If you're not, you need to be a member of, you need to join a church. I, I open the doors of the I Am Church for you. You can be a member of the I Am Church. And you, and I, and I, I promise you, you're going to get the truth. You going to get, you come to the I Am Church for the truth, you're going to get the truth. And like they'd say, when you swear in at the courthouse, I swear before God and before man. I swear, so help me God. I'm going to tell the truth. <laughs> I'm going to tell the truth. I'm going to tell the truth, so help me God. You can, you can rest assured, Pastor Mitch is going to tell the truth. You can believe that. I don't, care, I don't care who come, how much money they got, or how much money they don't have, I am going to tell the truth. I'm going to say what the Bible say. Amen? There ain't no compromising. There ain't no, I'm going to preach the truth. If, if the, 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 uh, thank you, Jesus. Okay, okay, I won't say it. <laughs> when the dust settles, I say it. 
But one day I said, well, I ain't gonna say it tonight. But one day I said, amen. But, but, but we need to teach, teach the people the truth. Amen. We need, to t we need to tell the truth. We need to teach the truth because the truth is this right here. This is the truth and there's no error in it. No error. I don't care what you hear online. I don't care what you hear people saying on, on YouTube and all of that. Facebook, Instagram. I don't care what they say. This is unerrant. There's no errors in this book right here. I don't care who wrote it. Yeah, yeah, God used man. To, to, to write these oracles, the oracles of God, amen, God inspired man. I don't care what his name is. He's inspired me to preach. He inspired you to talk to somebody. He inspired you to talk to somebody. He inspired you to talk to somebody. Come on, somebody. It's by the inspiration of God, not by man choice. Because I, 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 find, I find too much stuff in the Bible to just, just, just think that a man will write himself in damnation. That a man would write himself out of life. I don't see that. I don't, I don't see a man who want to commit adultery would write this book. A man who want to kill people would write this book. I don't see it. And a man who don't want to have nothing to do with people, I don't see him writing this right here. Uh, discriminations would be a, a part. Of, there's no discriminations in this book right here. God love all people. Amen. So we thank God tonight. Amen. The last and final thing that we want to cover tonight is time to give. Glory to God. I say it's time to give. Amen. Every part, of, every part of the service is my favorite. So I don't have no favorite part of the service. All of it is my favorite. <laughs> Amen. When I come to church, I come to church to enjoy all my favorites, the whole service. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So we thank God tonight. Amen. It's time to give. Amen. Right at the end of the service. Amen. You may uh, come and share your gifts, your seed, amen, and tell that neighbor, say, the seed that leave my hand will never leave my life. That harvest will always come, amen? And the Lord tells us to give and it will be given. Whatever you give, it will be given to you, pressed down, shaken together, running over. God said, I cause men to give into your bosom. Whatever that is that you give, you give love, it's coming back. You give forgiveness, it's coming back. You give hatred, it's coming back. <laughs> Amen. So whatever you give is coming back to you. Amen. So whatever I measure out is coming back to me. Amen. So we thank God tonight. Also, also, you can see the ways in which you can give. There you go. Just go ahead and follow, follow what it says on the screen because I'm getting ready to get off. I'm getting ready to leave you. So get it all now. Write it down. Memorize it. Whatever you got to do. Amen. The last and final thing that we want to do, we want to leave. We want to go home. Amen. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. The last part. Of the, that's what we. This is what we. We have benediction, and then we're open for fellowship. Amen. We get to get chit chat with one another. Amen. So lift that right hand, if you will, and repeat after me what I say unto one. I say unto all, watch and pray, and love the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul and all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Look across the room at that neighbor, say, neighbor, before you leave, you owe me love, so give it up. God bless you. We hope you were blessed by this worship experience here at The I Am Church. Make sure you share this message with your loved ones. Remember, there are three ways for you to give. Number one, website giving. Open your web browser and type in T-I-A-C-J-A-X dot O-R-G and click on the giving tab. Number two is giving through Cash App. Open the Cash App on your Android or iOS device and enter your amount you'd like to give and search the I Am Church and click send and you will get a confirmation. Number three is given through our church app. Go to the I Am Church app and click on the Give tab. And you will be able to give through your church app. Thanks for watching and we hope you were blessed. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel at T-I-A-C-J-A-X and like and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. 
And if you have not downloaded your church app, please go download our church app. Go to your phone's app store and search The I Am Church and click download. For those who just gave their life to Christ or want to become a member here at The I Am Church, please visit T-I-A-C-J-A-X dot O-R-G forward slash connect and fill out the connect card. Thanks for watching and have a blessed week.